The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Yeah, I read a story recently, one of our Yitzhak Zilberstein Svarim, there was a Rebbe, this goes back to this before cell phones, so he was in the middle of giving a shir, Shivik Tana, and um, all of a sudden, like a bolt of lightning, he ran out of the shear, went straight into the office, the principal was there, he picks up the phone, he calls home, he says, did, did, did they take the, the, the clothing? Did you, did you throw it out? Yeah, 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 threw it out. Did, did they take it yet? Did the grab trucks came? Yeah, yeah. He hangs up the phone and goes back to Shear. So later on, lunchtime, the principal, the Manal, comes over to him and says, says, I don't know, it's not like you. I, you just ran out of Shear. You come into the office. You pick up the phone with these cryptic comments. What, what in the world was going on? What happened? So he says, I'll tell you what happened. One of my children, Baruch Hashem, are getting married. And as you know, Chinuch, unfortunately, does not really pay a living wage. So I had to borrow a tremendous amount of money for the chasana. And when I came up with the money, I figured I'm going to put it in one of my old suits that I don't wear, and I'll, I'll, t- I'll take it out later. This is before Shabbos. So uh, on Shabbos, my wife tells me that she wants to get rid of all the old clothing, and she's going to He's going to throw it out uh, right after Shabbos. And, uh, and I said, I didn't want to say anything about the money that I put in one of the old suits. That she... So I said, because it was Shabbos, so I, I said, I'll, I'll speak to her about it after Shabbos. But then I completely forgot about it. And then now in the middle of the shear, like a bolt of lightning, it hit me. Oh, my gosh. You know, so he, I ran to the office. I called my wife. I said, did you throw out the, the, the clothing? And she says, yes. Did the garbage trucks come? Did they take it, yes. They took it already. Well, so I hung up the phone and I, I went back to give Shia. He says, what? He says, I don't understand. How, how could you just go back to Shia <laughs> as if nothing happened, realizing that you lost all this money? I mean, how do you do that? So he said to the Manal, I'm a Talmud of Rav Gad Eisner. Rav Gad Eisner was a shame dover, a survivor of the Holocaust. He was a mashkiach for the, uh, the Ger Yeshivas. An unbelievable person. And he said he instilled within us, day in and day out, that there will be moments in life that things will happen to you that one has to tell themselves, maybe this is the reason where HaKadosh Baruch Hu put me here on this earth was for this moment. Call it the Vayimo'en moment. Call it the Kodak moment. But it's for this moment, maybe that's why Hashem put me here. And it, it, it was constantly instilled within us. So when this happened, I just said to myself, well, who knows? Maybe this is the reason as to why HaKadosh Baruch Hu put me into this world is to pass this Nisayon. And that's how we really have to go through life. Of course, the daily grind, the Torah learning, the mitzvahs, of course you have to do. And you're great for doing it. But that which is going to really color your future spiritual reality, that which could literally bring you to unbelievable heights of godless, is those special Nisayonos that take place for you personally in life. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.